talk for a few minutes about avoiding liquid locks. And for that, um, for that purpose, we'll, we'll use my 1931 Jacobs LA-1 engine. Now I realize, of course, this isn't a Lycoming, but it has the, uh, uh, the same features as a Lycoming, which is upper and lower cylinders. And any time we have lower cylinders, then we're susceptible to liquid lock. And so, so this, will, uh, this will work just fine for, for demonstrating that. Before we talk about that, though, I would like to talk about propellers for just a minute. There is a, a saying where guns are concerned that when you handle any gun, you always consider it loaded until you verify that it's not. So you, you always treat any gun as a loaded gun until you verify that the chamber is empty. It's true of propellers as well. Uh, until you have verified that the magnetos are cold and grounded, the propeller needs to be treated as if it's hot. Now you may just be pulling the engine through to, to start it uh, in an attempt to make sure that you have no liquid locks. If that magneto is on, and if there is just the faintest mixture left in the induction system, the engine will try to start. It thinks you're trying to prop it if you're pulling it through. And so it's very, very important that you, um, that you make sure the mags are, are off. If, um, you know, if that thing tries to start, even with a weak mixture in the, uh, in the induction system, uh, if you're fortunate, you'll come away with just broken bones. It, it can be much, much worse. So always be sure that your, your mags are grounded and cold before you, uh, before you start pulling an engine through, uh, you know, in preparation to start the engine. Uh, back when I was in grade school, we, um, we watched uh, film strips. Now, this was, uh, this was before they had motion pictures. Um, no, it, we had motion pictures too, but we watched film strips. And I remember a, a film strip in science class where we had Mr. Gravity. And Mr. Gravity was always trying to pull everything to the center of the Earth. Well, what I can tell you about radial engines is that Mr. Gravity is alive and well, and he still works with radial engines. And one of the, uh, one of the downsides to gravity is that it is constantly pulling all of the oil in the engine down into the lower cylinders. And uh, if we're not careful, we can wind up with a liquid or a hydraulic lock. So what is, what is a liquid lock? A liquid lock happens any time that the volume above the piston in the combustion chamber, when the piston is at top dead center, the volume of oil is greater than the volume of the combustion chamber. So the piston is coming down, about to reach top dead center, and it finds before it reaches top dead center that the, the cylinder is full of oil. And what happens is, if you're pulling the, the propeller through at that point, it feels like you've hit a brick wall. It just stops. And you, you can feel it. it. It just locks it up. Oil doesn't compress well at all. Um, that, that's why they use it in, um, in brake systems, because uh, it, it doesn't compress. Air compresses great. Oil, not so much. So you, you're pulling through, and you hit that... that um, that brick wall of oil that's down there in, in one of your lower cylinders. With the Lycoming engine, it would be either cylinder number five or cylinder number six. So what do you do at that point? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. Um, one is to pull the, uh, the front spark plugs out. That's the, the tried and true uh, method. And pulling the front spark plugs out, then you can pull the engine through and it will uh, squirt out whatever oil is down there, makes a mess. Uh, you can put a piece of cardboard under it to catch it and, and uh, keep it from running into your cowling if you've got a cowling. But, um, but that will clear whatever is in, your, uh, in the lower portion of the lower cylinders. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't do anything about oil that might be back in your intake pipes. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the things that some people try to do to clear a liquid lock is to pull the propeller backwards in the opposite to the direction, normal direction of rotation. And oftentimes that will clear the liquid lock. But what it does is it opens the intake valve again and you get to push the oil 
back into the intake pipe. And that oil is going to lurk back there in the intake pipe. It's not going to come out because your airplane's in a three-point attitude. And so that oil is going to sit back there in the intake pipe. It's not going to come out until you start the engine. Then there's going to be enough vacuum to suck it into the cylinder. And if that quantity of oil that's back there in the intake pipe is greater than the volume above your piston, then you're not only going to have a liquid lock, but you're going to have the inertia of the crankshaft and the inertia of the propeller turning. And they very well may pull it through the liquid lock, but something's going to give. Uh, I've seen cylinders that were split from spark plug bushing to spark plug bushing from a liquid lock. It just split the cylinder wide open because that was the weak point. There probably was already a flaw there. Most of the time what happens is it bends a link rod. Um, I have some examples of, uh, of bent link rods. This, this first link rod, you can see a polished area that is just starting on the side of the rod. The rod doesn't actually look bent at all. It looks straight, but there's a little polished area. That's because the rod is bent, and with every revolution, it hits the side of the cylinder skirt at the bottom. And so that cylinder skirt is machining away on the, uh, on the link rod, and that will continue to happen until the link rod finally fatigues in two because it's flexing. Now that it's bent, it's flexing with each revolution. The second link rod, you can see is a, the area is polished a little bit more. Now, the, Both these link rods came in with engines that the owner had no idea that he had a bent link rod. Uh, these are both aluminum link rods, and um, so these, these could have been in an early uh, 225. There's kind of an amazing thing with the, um, with the aluminum link rods. They will often bend only in one plane. You can see that they're machining fairly evenly. They're, they're not twisted, they're just bent in one plane. And so they continue to run for a long time this way. Uh, this next link rod uh, is a imminent catastrophic failure is what it is. Uh, this guy knew he had problems. There was banging and whacking going on inside of his engine and he could hear it. And he probably didn't have another two or three minutes before that one would turn loose. And um, he actually caught it just in time. It did beat up the, the skirt of one cylinder, but had it continued and broken in two, then what was left of that rod would have gone swinging through the engine, taking out all the other cylinders and possibly the crankshaft and case. So this one, uh, he caught this one just in time. Now the fourth link rod that I have here is a steel link rod. You can see that this steel link rod is bent, but the steel link rod is not only bent, but it's twisted as well. It's kind of a feature of that uh, I-beam steel link rod is that they almost always bend in two planes. That's, uh, that's both good and bad. It's good because it tells you almost immediately when you've had a liquid lock and bent a rod that there's a problem. Uh, the, the aluminum rods will go on running for a long time. The uh, steel rod will stop altogether and because it, it cants the piston in the cylinder so badly that, uh, that there is much resistance. Um, unfortunately, the, the bad part of the steel link rod is that if it does happen while the engine's running, if, if you do have oil back in the intake pipe, it suddenly sweeps out into that cylinder while the engine is running, it almost instantly will break and then go swinging through the engine tearing everything up. So one question might be, what can we do if we do think that there might be oil back in the intake pipes? You can usually hear the oil gurgling back in the intake pipes when you're pulling it through. It's bubbling and gurgling back there. And uh, so what can you do about that? Well, there's a couple of things you can do about the intake pipes. One is you can lift the tail of the airplane. If you lift the tail of the airplane so that that intake pipe is no longer the low point, but the cylinder is the low point, and you have those front two spark plugs out, then the oil will go ahead and run out of the intake pipe. Another thing that I've seen done, I don't recommend, but I've seen it done, is to pull the front two spark plugs, the front two lower spark plugs out, uh, and start the engine. It makes a horrible mess, uh, but it'll get the oil out of the um, out of those lower intake pipes. 
The third thing is there's actually an approved modification for the two lower intake pipes where there is a fitting welded to those and, and they're actually intake pipe drains. Uh, we, we sell quite a few intake pipe drains. It's, it's cheap insurance uh, against uh, a liquid lock that you can't do anything about back in the intake pipes. So clearing, clearing liquid locks is, uh, is an important thing. I've seen people just run out and start an engine without pulling it through. It's, uh, it's foolhardy. Um, so how many times do you have to pull it through? How many blades do you have to pull through? What you have to do as a minimum is two complete revolutions of the crankshaft. If you do two complete revolutions of the crankshaft, every cylinder will have gone through all four cycles and, uh, and if there's a liquid lock, it will have turned up. I personally pull them through six times. I'm just one of those paranoid guys. It's not that hard, and uh, I, I like to feel the compression as I go around, and so, so uh, you know, two is a minimum, six is better. And uh, so if you'll, if you'll diligently uh, pull your radials through, it will be much, much less likely that you'll ever have a problem with, uh, with a liquid lock. Now, one other weird liquid lock that we ran across one time is uh, it, we had a broken link rod on a 220 Continental that came into us, and the broken link rod was on number two. I said, what was that about? Uh, certainly gravity wasn't, uh, wasn't getting oil into cylinder number two. That's above the center line of the engine. What, what was happening? And what we eventually found out was that it was a liquid lock, but it wasn't an oil liquid lock. It was a fuel liquid lock. The guy had a bad primer, and so he, he left his fuel turned on. His primer was closed and locked, but his fuel was still on, and gravity was running through that primer, through the priming system, and it filled up the number two cylinder. And so when he, uh, he didn't clear the, the liquid lock, he hit the starter and, uh, and it went bang and broke the rod. The rod went swinging through there. The engine did start. And so it, uh, it staked the bottom of every cylinder. We had to torch all the cylinders off in order to, uh, to get the engine apart. Fortunately, his, um, uh, his crankshaft and his power case were okay, so it, uh, it was just a set of cylinders and, uh, and pistons and a complete teardown to get all the metal out of the engine. So the lesson in all of that is, is just, um, you know, we still have Mr. Gravity working against us, so uh, the, the safest thing to do is uh, be diligent about always pulling the engine through and verifying that you don't have liquid lock.